billionaire. With me once again is Brian Colgan, a software consultant who has already pocketed $2,000. Now, Brian, last time you were here, I'm looking at you trying to figure out who do you look like? And it came to me, audience, what do you think? The brawny man, right? I think you look like that brawny guy. You do, and I mean that night, you do. You look like the guy on the, not the toilet paper, it's the other kind of paper. Okay. I, right, the paper I towels. That, I take that as a compliment, thank you. Oh, absolutely, yes. the, he's a, well, he's the brawny man. There he's you go. brawny, he's good looking. He wears, do you wear flannel? Not since the 80s. Not since the 80s. Yeah. You don't wear flannel like PJs? No. No? Yeah. Do you like flannel? Yeah, if you want me to, I will. No, that's all right. <laughs> <laughs> Well, we'll talk later. <laughs> it's nice to have you here, Great Brian. Great to be back, thanks. Nice to have you back at $2,000, going for 4000 And the best thing is you haven't used one of your lifelines, which is a great position to be in. And we have all the checks written out in your name, Capital One check for a million. This is the one you want. You want them all, but this is the one you really want. I like the look of that one. It's got a good look to it. Yes. So what do you say? Are you ready to play Millionaire? I am ready. Audience, are you ready to play Millionaire? Okay, Brian, this is for $4,000. Who's Harry Crumb in the 1989 movie, Who's Harry Crumb? Chevy Chase, Bill Murray, John Candy, Dan Aykroyd. You know, I think I'm gonna have to ask the audience for this one. Not a problem, audience. Brian needs your help. If you're ready, vote now. All right, seventy-six percent believe it is John Candy. That's a good number right there. Mm. Nothing else really comes close to that. Well, I think the people have spoken. <laughs> uh, who am I to doubt their uh, wisdom of popular culture? So I will have to go with C. John Candy. Final answer. And he's terrific in it. You got it. Okay, Brian, this is for $8,000. Reuters, the well-known international news agency, was founded in 1851 in what city? Berlin, New York, Paris, London. Hmm. Well, I've spent a lot of time in London. I do a lot of Reuters feeds for our, our uh, derivatives pricing. Um, so I'm leaning towards that, but I'm not quite sure, so I think I'll have to try the 50-50 uh, 50-50? Right. Sure. Computer, please randomly take away two of the wrong answers. Okay. Okay. It's there along with Berlin. That's true. Hmm. In that case, I'll have to go with my gut, which I thought originally, and I'll have to say D, London. Final answer. Your gut was right. You got it for eight thousand dollars. All right, Brian. This is for sixteen thousand. Okay. Occurring mostly in infants, pyloric stenosis is a medical condition that primarily affects what bodily system? Nervous, digestive, respiratory, immune. <laughs> Not cirrhosis, but stenosis. Stenosis, right. Okay. <laughs> I will have to use my call friend for this one. Okay. Who would you like to call? To call John. And who's John? John is a friend and dive buddy of mine. Terrific. We're going to get John on the line. Hello? Hey. John, it's Meredith from Millionaire. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. Good. I'm good, too, and so is Brian, who's sitting right here with me. Hi, Brian. Hi, John. It's going for $16,000. Johnny needs your help, okay? I'll do the best I can. Okay, I know you will, Brian. You have 30 seconds. Your time starts now. Occurring mostly in infants, pyloric stenosis is a medical condition that primarily affects what bodily system? Nervous? Digestive? respiratory or immune oh i got this one brian digestive system 
I knew I could count on you, John. You're pretty sure of that, huh? Yep. You are the man. Thank you. All right. Good luck. Thanks. All right. That seals it. Sounded pretty confident, I'll tell you that. Well, he's a doctor. So. Oh. <laughs> So in that case, I feel very confident that my answer will be B, digestive, final answer. I'm glad to report he's right. You got it. Sweet. Oh, right. Going for $25,000 here, Brian, in that fourth lifeline. Okay. Which of these classic novels does not take place during World War II? A Farewell to Arms, Catch-22, The Naked and the Dead, from here to eternity. Well, Catch-22 does take place in World War II, obviously. As does From Here to Eternity. Making the Dead, I'm not sure of. Um, Farewell to Arms was actually Ernest Hemingway in World War I, so I'll have to go with A. Farewell to Arms, final answer. You got to twenty-five thousand dollars, Brian. Good job, Brian. Just pick up that fourth one. We'll be right back after this. Good job.